And those three, they did look super strong. Boxeon and Tusk in particular was kind of running the show, made them just come back in that game after that 7K deficit that they had just with some clutch saves and aggression. And yep, I mean, we'll have to see if this type of gaming strategy ends up working because it is a bit different from the style that we've seen run in some of these games in this tournament. Already seeing it setting up around the early action. No one gonna, no one gonna find any fights off the back of the first bounty runes. Uh, but yeah, what, what do you sort of make of gaming, gaming's overall direction this time around then in comparison to what they went for in game one? More scaling. They're gonna be able to just play the game to the later stages and stuff like that. I feel like that last one is a very standard. They want to snowball out of control with this Underlord and Chen and just completely dictate the pace of that early first 20 minutes. But yeah, Liquid, they fought back formidably. This one feels like they can look to stall the game out, play more about that economy game and stuff like that with the DK. Just is it gonna work is a bit of a question. Because they're Liquid, they did switch things up as well. Even though they have three common heroes, they bring in this Bristleback that's not been played too much throughout this tournament. But I was looking actually just before this game started, 33 has been kind of playing it in quite a bit of pubs. And is it anything specific about the Bristol right now that you could imagine 33, you know, is the reason why 33 feels good about this hero in this meta? Yeah, I mean, you're able to fight super fast, you thrive off of stacks, and he's playing with two of the better stackers in the game, the Shadow Demon in particular. And he's just able to park himself in front of towers and defend maybe some of these early aggressive moves. Well, level one, though, could be a little bit vulnerable. The Snowball save's gonna come out for now, but Fetri's still getting brought incredibly low here. And they try to bait one another, and maybe Duraccio's the one getting baited in. And up to, what, the three stacks of the Quill Sprays there, so Duraccio had to be careful. Both cores getting harassed very low by one another's team's supports. They make the call though, Box, he's like, all right, maybe there's a little bit of a hard lane to just play straight up. He's gonna try to at least pull this wave on the side here and it should be successful. Mid, Quinn, we'll see how he handles versus Tiny, another hero that's not been played the most throughout this tournament, but an, a standard counter versus the Puck. Yeah, one that historically we've seen Nisha have some explosive performances on. See how well he's able to I imagine potentially get a lead in this mid matchup. How does this work? We saw obviously switched around last time. Nisha being on the puck, and uh, well, Quinn playing like that melee hero with a hard hitting right click. Is it also similar case where Tiny can have a little bit of an edge early on, or is it not quite the same? Yeah, a slight edge in the denies, but it's yep. a very skill matchup, right? I think I've seen either of these players kind of win depending on you know just a couple of these few early TS and stuff like that. Because puck overall, the beauty about this hero now is you just get so much extra healing when you're playing in the lane just from this puckish, this innate ability. You're able to just walk in, tank tower hits, dodge spells as well too, so every phase shift actually heals you pretty massively. Looking down at the, the safe lane this time round from Liquid, they're gonna try with a bit of setup. I mean, Ace has got a lot of poison stacks upon him. Shouldn't quite kill him, but at least it's gonna Senior. force him right back. And Senior having to be careful as Tofu tries to push forward in return. Oh, and this, this matchup actually in the mid lane, something really interesting is, of course you can dodge normal spells, and also the tree grab. I think Nisha has to be careful every time he throws the tree at the puck, because if you dodge that one, you actually get four times the amount, because it's a spell projectile. Is what it looked like, at least. I believe he healed for like 100 or something when he threw the tree and dodged it. I'll keep eyes on see, see if that mechanic actually works like that, but... Uh, so far in the, the CS in the mid, it's proven to be pretty even yep. in performance. 16 and 1 on Quinn, 14 and 3 for Nisha. Yeah, pretty solid stuff. And also, one thing that we do get to see, which I think has not really gotten through in too many of these games, it's this Naga Siren. And it's not a five position Naga Siren either, which is very interesting to see. They do want Celery playing this Enchantress, but top lane. Interesting change. Quite a few Quill Spray stacks onto Duraccio. He's got to back off. Got the heals from Celery coming in. I mean, you can feel both teams here, Liquid and Gaming, really trying to push one another's cores to the edge, to limits here in this laning stage top. Just the question is going to be who's the, the first to fall off the back of these back and forth fights between Duraccio and 33. You just have to be careful because it's such explosive damage that can come from a Bristleback out of nowhere. And they do have a Healing Lotus on the Tusk as well. So if you do get over aggressive, over zealous, they could just pop that Lotus, get an extra Quill or two out. So you do have to be a bit careful on the side of game and how aggressive you want to get onto 33. But Duraccio, he's farming good. That's the important thing. So 21 and 4, and he is pretty much full HP. And overall, do you see Gaming Gladiators ha maybe having a bit of a better plan for dealing with Mikke if the fight started to get out of control? Because we saw last game, despite that early lead that Gaming Gladiators had, when they started to sort of slip behind, there were so many fights that Mikke was just able to find prime position to sit sit in place, turret out that damage, and get just this incredible net worth lead. This time, do they have better answers to the safe lane profit? I feel like they actually had... They had some really good heroes versus the Prophet in the last game, to be honest with you. So I'm not 100% sure, but they do have good ways to get on top of him and burst him down to more control, I would say, than that last one. But there's still these saves, so it's tough to really say, because the Shadow Demon is Tusk. We saw what they were able to do to just stop any of this aggression if they were in the early, in the good position, which after the first 12 minutes, they were always in the right spot. 
Not for sure, and if anything, you know, we saw how well Liquid supports were able to get the saves off in a game against a, a smoke screen. you know, where Ricky was involved. This time, that's not there, so it may even be that little bit easier for Liquid to pull off these clutch saves when gaming gladiators start making moves for the cause of Liquid. Mid-match. This mid-match up is hype. I mean, yeah, very, very even. Just a hundred gold difference between the two of them. Uh, they're going to hit sort of levels at a pretty similar pace here hmm. in the mid. But the puck can stay sustained a little bit easier, I would say, at this point, just because of that constant healing that's coming out. So Nisha actually does get pushed away from Stop. the lane. They're going to go for Duraccio. Straight away, they see that he's alone. The TP comes in from Mikke. duraccio has gone. It's first blood for 33. Heads up stuff, and immediately we just TP back to bottom. Love it. Mikke tried to do this that last game, too. Early TP around that four or five minute mark. This time it works out just a bit better. And 33 now, top of that net worth. DK Enchantress lane, usually a lane that is it's pretty difficult to bully, but if you're going to be able to bring the numbers like that, it is beautiful. And in terms of the, the Naga Siren, right, one of the edges right with this hero is the, the presence in the lane. I mean, the question is, has Tofu been able to do enough in this laning stage? Because looking at the farm, not, not really. really caused any slowdown for Mikke. No, and most of the times when I've seen this hero played so dominantly, it's because you're playing with that ranged core in the safe lane. You're able to abuse either this Insair plus real in combo with the Delusion, you get some early kills. So, yeah, definitely going to be a different kind of approach from Tofu and see what he's able to do. Right now, it's just him using mirror images to kind of block camps and manipulate waves like that. But... It's not really having the effect that maybe they wanted to in this bottom lane. Yes, Ace is farming, but you're not really putting pressure onto Mikke. So Duracha. So I might want to go for an early move down towards the bottom. Oh, this is cool. They're actually bringing four heroes. So I guess this is the way they want to pressure, because they don't have the best dual pressure. They want to do this, but Boxy's reading the movement. Liquid seem to be relatively prepared for this potential play, or maybe they're just going to look to go aggressive first themselves. They do. They go straight over towards the Tofu. Uh, you're going to get the follow-ups done as well from Ace. This could give Gaming Gladiators the chance to fight back. Celery and Ace, do they have enough damage to threaten Mikke? A bit of body blocking here from Tofu with the Nagasar and Illusion, but Mikke is still able to get around, get back to safety. We saw yeah, Duracho didn't want to be a part of this. Resumes farm up top so gaming gladiators as soon as they lose tofu there they decide against trying to make, make that sort of wraparound play the wisdom rune it's gonna get stolen he's able to just take down away tofu he's already he's got, he's got, he's got no experience. way out though he's got no way out does he see him he's sneaking i uh, is he I actually think, he's actually been able to juke perfectly There's outside of vision i don't think tofu's seen him at all celery they see this with the scan celery's trying to catch him up and mickey's just waltzing past them uh, they, they, they see him of course now with the micro, I mean, surely he doesn't get away with this big Surely not. Ace is looking to go and get him now. Yeah, Ace they're, they're going to put an end to him here, Ace. Uh, either I don't know if he can do some crazy sort of sprout play. He, he tries, but he the Quelling Blade's there. Ace will be able to slowly but surely catch him out and cut him down. So he gets the wisdom. It does cost him his life. Always painful to lose these wisdom runes. They're not really the most, I would say, the most level dependent. Uh, supports on the side of gaming gladiators though, right? The level sixes aren't really that impactful from either one of them. Yes, the Naga song later on will be, but early on, them actually missing out on that XP might not be the most emotion most atrocious thing. Because sometimes it's like a snap fire that doesn't get a six super early. But these two, yeah, we'll see what type of result it ends up happening. Of course, the supports on Liquid, they're going to be super happy and they're going to be very high level. So Boxy, he's already level five. And in terms of some of the individual farm we're seeing at 33, he's getting quite a scary bit of space up top. Sure is. They're going for the surround play bottom. Duraccio's got involved. Mikke is trying to TP out top of Duraccio's found him. In on top of him with the Dragon Tail. Gaming Gladiators, have they got any further cancel for the TP of Mikke? They don't. So they'll have to turn and sell for Boxy. Liquid, they get Mikke out. Heavy commitment though. It is a Stampede plus a DK form to at least try to pressure tower and get a kill. They just get a support. And yeah, like you said, in the meantime, 33. He's just doing it, maximizing mechanics. Yeah, he's massive. Yeah, he's just pulling creeps into jungle creeps, stacking them up as much as possible. This is going to be an absurdly fast Ags timing for him. And we see the progress between the two mid laners, Nisha and Quinn, continues to be incredibly close. Dead even. Literally eight gold between the two of them or something, or nine. My math is bad. Watch out. Looking at 33, you see, you've got to sort of ask the question, of gaming gladiators, what, what's the plan with regards to this bristle? Because at the moment, 33 is on track to Get one of the faster Axe timings you'll see on a Bristleback this patch. I imagine it's just to get a really, really farm DK. Maybe at some point the Silver Edge later down the lines can be something they look for an answer, but I would imagine it's the Rocho getting this armlet, getting this type of crazy type of farm to deal with him, because besides that, their damage is definitely quite limited versus a very farm Bristle in the early game. And speaking of very farm Bristle, he does still have those stacks to go back to as well, which I believe is like a double stack and a triple on the Ancients.
Yeah, that's insane. Actually, if, if things continue like this, this is going to be a completely insane Agadim's timing. Yep. This game for 33. He's just, he's already half the way there. As you can see, with stacks of the plenty, he'll be in a very, very solid time. And across the board, though, the three cores of Gladiators do have the tools to make plays. Definitely on a hero's outside of the bristle. So we'll see where gaming Gladiators look to make their moves. And just in general, look to see if they try and check out this area and get some information regarding the stacks of Team Liquid. Celery. And caught in. Big rapid nature. And uh, with the burst coming in as well from the snowball, Stampede is not going to get Celery out in time. Same time up top, Duracho is going to try to set him on a really 33. Tanky. He really is, and backup is in for it. And Sania holds back Duracho. With these two heroes, there's just not a chance. Even with Quinn being present, he knows that using a drink hole there is just not going to do a whole lot at all. This Bristleback is very unlikely to die unless they bring all five, and even at that, it might not still be an easy job. No, absolutely. It's going to be until later on when they have the answers, especially, like we are saying, the DK, or if they can get him actually facing the right target, because they do have stuns, at the least, to be able to stop and hold that Bristol See, back in place. Mid. Nisha? I'm going to try and get the catch. Nisha Optic to immediately break the Dream Coil. TP's well, we're going to come in, but they've actually backed off on that game of Gladiators. They know they're not getting a kill quick and easy. Nisha's going to be fine. Quinn's Quinn. in trouble. He's ended up under the tower, jumping over towards the orb in an attempt to get away from Nisha and Insania. He's got another orb to try and break away. Have they got anything to stop it? No, they have not. So Toss. Quinn, able to dance safely back to the side of Celery's Enchantress. Almost had the vision there from Nisha. If he was able to get that toss, the face shift and everything was actually down. Could have almost maybe gotten that pocket. But they're going to smoke instantly, even without the coil at the ready. This is a very unexpected move that could catch Liquid off guard here. They're going to throw the scan. Let's see what they can find. Mickey would be the ideal catch. I mean, they have this deep ward. It's about to expire as well, too. Mickey might not see this coming. That ward was literally right outside the sentry range. Now, this is a solid play here from Gaming Gladiators, but it will get shown now. So TP do TV. start to come through. Maybe these two can't get the burst off in time to kill him off. Mickey's going to come in with the snow. They got Quinn. Save from Boxy, and indeed they just turn and kill Quinn off. Boxy was that was the, that was the fastest TP I've ever seen. I, it, it was, it was before they even showed on the smoke. It felt like that was crazy. Like, he is on point with this tusk. I looked like they were going to get away with it as well. If it weren't to be for this pesky tusk, Boxy save after save. Oh, Mickey's doing some really cool little stuff here too. Just planting this tree for extra damage. That's actually kind of neat. Just this GG branch with his innate. Actually, very cool. I don't think I've seen any many people do that. I was wondering why he was just randomly dropping the GG branch, but I'm like, oh, very cool. Well, the farm continues, and indeed, this this, this, this bristle back. Bristle. 33. He's completely out of control. The Agonims, uh, uh, ridiculous timing here. Pre-12 minutes, I believe. That's insane. And he's got the Voodoo Mask. Yeah, the Spell Life still is already out on top of it. Overall, looking at the lineup of Gaming Gladiators too, nobody really wants to build a Vessel. I mean, Vessel's kind of a dead item right now. No one wants to build Vessel, and Shiva's is not going to come down for ages, even if it does come out for something like Puck. So, definitely going to be some problems that they have with this Bristle. I mean, for Gaming Gladiators, what sort of item timing or strength do you think they're looking towards to, to make their move this game? I think it's going to be pretty farm heavy, actually, on this okay. game. I feel like it's a very different strategy that they've gone for this game around. Usually they're around like 25 minute aura timings. There's a lineup where we may not even see too many auras come out from either side, let's be honest with you. So definitely a bit of a different kind of style game that it could lead up to these like late games, which I think we're all looking forward to because we've had quite a bit of these games around like the 20 to 35 minute mark that kind of end. This one could get pretty late game if they end up playing just for this farm game, which for gaming, it looks like they want to. So Liquid definitely have a way to set tempo, though. They have this Bristleback who's massive. They can force objectives very early on, and that's what it feels like they're going to start doing, playing around 33. Yeah, we'll have to see how much they, they can force, because indeed, if the game gets to a point where we're sort of 20, 25 minutes in, and the Bristol's at the high ground of Gaming Gladiators, Gaming Gladiators is going to have to come in with some sort of answer. Yes, absolutely. I mean, that's definitely the ideal play the Liquid wants to do, is oh, pressure the map early. Strong leader from Quinn. So they have the damage for Vase and the Stampede and the Who Stomp. They certainly will. Make they can force objectives very early on, and that's what it feels like they're going to start doing, playing around 33. Yeah, we'll have to see how much they, they can force, because indeed, if the game gets to a point where we're sort of 20, 25 minutes in and the Bristol's at the high ground of Gaming Gladiators. Gaming Gladiators is going to have to come in with some sort of answer. Yes, absolutely. They're, that's definitely the ideal play the Liquid wants to do is pressure oh, the map early. Strong lead in from Quinn. So they have the damage for Vase and the Stampede and the Who Stomp. They certainly will. Mickey, there's no saving him this side. Gaming Gladiators think of the kill, but can they get they out? Can Nisha He's in with the combo. Avalanche to follow up onto both Nisha, uh, onto Quinn and Celery. Snowball over towards Quinn. They've got the start and the punch up. They're taking Quinn out. Celery, he's been caught in by the shards. 33 and his Saint are ready to chase down Ace. Celery's going to TP out as Liquid, they'll look for the bigger target instead, getting Ace as well. They'll get the trades. 
And the more advantageous ones, they do have to swing four heroes down here, so it's quite a bit expended. Duracho will be happy to be able to farm off of that timing. But Liquid, it's such quick reactions that they've been able to do here. And Nisha now at this point has a very large separation between him and, and Quinn. The amp damage rune already finished up on the him. Our amp damage is on in for him, and he's going to have a phylactery pretty early on. So the scaling is also going to come from Nisha. It's just taking that little bit more time and, and just been that bit more hard for Quinn to find successful kills off the back of his Dream Coil play. He, he has to just be so careful because there is this type of explosive damage. The Tiny is always going to be a bit of a problem for him. And Boxy so far, no matter what lineup he's against, it feels like if he gets his Tusk is a problem. It's a nice play there, Celery with the Wild Wing Ripper trying to tear himself away from Nisha. Nisha for now is going to continue to chase. They've got the TP coming in. Indeed, Nisha. Slowly playing around with Celery. They've got the numbers here. Insania, Boxy, Mickey, and the whole team pretty much turning up to get another kill on the board here, Liquid. And the crazy thing in the meantime, look where 33 is. He's just occupying the enemy triangle, kind of challenging them, telling them to come at him because he knows he's pretty much invulnerable unless they bring all five. Buys an early shard as well, too, so he's got the hairball even stronger. He is a big problem. Duracho is farming, but he needs a couple bit more items before he wants to be able to join versus this Bristle. Armlet, S and Y, and then yeah, we see that Silver Edge is going to eventually, of course, be queued up onto Duraccio. But that's going to take time, and Liquid, they can thrive off just occupying the map with this 3k advantage. With this early Blink Dagger, with this aggression, they can play with the Tusk. Looking for the setup around the mid, Liquid. Big Getting the jump in Nisha. He's able to get the setup straight away, they want to try and burst through the Enchantress. The heals are up for Celery! Too enough. much damage though, Liquid. Can get pretty much any kill that they jump for right now. Mickey's ready Quinn. to lead him for more. Looks towards Quinn, but the orb is back up. He's slowed down. They've got a stampede. They absolutely have to, but Nisha, he's able to still get him with the toss. The stampede doesn't matter. Nisha still able to close the gap and take Quinn out. Liquid's playing too fast for this gaming strategy at the moment. Yes, Duracio is farming, but everybody else is starting to fall further and further behind. They haven't been able to really involve Tofu either. I know he's just sitting back, kind of trying to get some farm going, but they can't even reset and avoid the fights that Liquid's bringing to them. The timings are accelerating fast. And they're, just, they're losing access to so much at 33. He just keeps taking away these Ancients. I believe they've been stacking some Ancients on their side, cleaning them up too. So they're farming, it feels like, 70% of the map. Gaming under a lot of pressure here. Now that Silver Edge, as you say, cannot come any sooner for Dracha. He needs it yesterday, really, against this Bristol. <laughs> I mean, once it's there, that will be the that will be the big test of whether gaming gladiators can bring together a fight to slow Liquid down. Yeah, but it's not it's not just the Bristol, right? It's it's Nisha scaling. Mickey is starting to get some scaling too, even though he's died twice. He is getting closer and closer to having his big item. He actually has it. Sorry. So Gleipner is already done. So Liquid just keep looking to pressure and gaming could really struggle in the damage department to kind of dissuade and push them off these towers or if that early Roche. Because Liquid feels like they have options right now how they want to pressure the map. Oh yeah, they're ready to get in under the tier 2 tower. If Nisha sees a chance to jump, he's going to be straight in for it. Got an arcane rune in the bowl as well. He's got that phylactery, so that burst damage, it's there. They're going to start to hit this tower here. Tofu wants to try to slow it down, but you can see the way the gaming's postured on the map. They don't want to go for a full-out fight around here. I mean, Liquid's going to have a pretty good idea that Gaming Gladius is playing from this tree line. D Quinn and Tofu, they've just got to back right away up to the high ground, up to the base. There's going to be no defense outside of a fortification here. They'll push them back temporarily. This tower is going down. Oh, they actually used, lose the train there. Whoopsie, Mickey. Bit of miss micro. Quinn, again, sort of having eyes on this area of the map, but he can't really start anything right now. All he can sort of do is just sit back and watch whilst Liquid takes these towers. It's so dangerous for him to step up. Just be this tiny pick, is, it's honestly working wonders to just not allow this puck to have any type of opportunities in the map to split things up, going to get any type of that extra farm. Quinn is very poor right now, bottom of the course. They're really looking to, to be all on Duraccio. Yeah, it, it definitely is right now. And look at the positioning, like Celery, he's trying to find desperate places to farm. There's a ward, and they will find him again. You just can't hide on the map right now from Liquid. They will find you. Firm control. Roche soon on the menu. Maybe they'll wait for it to shift down to bottom, but yeah, they really feel like they can kind of go anywhere right now. And, and of course, oh, 33, he gets the Vampire Fangs. I know Sand Kings have been the ones kind of thriving off of this one, but this is definitely one of those other heroes that can become pretty much unkillable on top of already being unkillable. This just adds an extra layer. Yeah, they've just not been able to slow him down not one bit this game. It's no. just been completely free for 33. It's 19 minutes so far. And Quinn, he got spotted for a second there. His orb. 
we'll just be able to split it up. Uh, they just have to keep so much distance between themselves and Liquid. And even at that, as we're seeing, Liquid you know, for a good setup of Mickey TPing in and getting the catch with the Gleitmir, they can still find kill opportunities. So gaming gladiators, they're having to play so cautious right now. They're just this is probably one of the I think this might be one of the first times I've seen this tournament that gaming is just full out split farming. They don't really want a full out fight, but they're Nisha gonna see, now shows. See if they can punish Nisha here on his own. He's got a regen rune. Backup is coming over. He's two day killing this tiny. Nisha's ready to turn things around. Gaming gladiators with the call to run. Quinn. Quinn. It would be able to jump down to the low ground in time. Tofu comes in with the song, and that may just be enough to save Ace. Indeed, Ace will get out. Tofu able to make sure there'll be no casualties this time for Gaming Gladiators. Look how much they just expended, though. They're trying to get Nisha, and he had the regen rune. He's full HP. This tier two, it's going to fall. And it seemed like even if he didn't, I don't oh. know if they were getting him there. Oh, 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 okay. They used the tier. I mean, this is their high ground cliff. Oh. oh, this is a dangerous one to use at times when you are behind like this. I see how much Liquid want to push him. Tower's gone. They're going to be tempted to maybe take the Tormentor first. Should be able to get that pretty easily here. With we have 33 bristle. on the Bristle. Yeah. There's going to be no struggle taking this one away from Gaming Gladiators. So okay. Tormentor for Liquid. Tor just a shard there for Boxy. They use the Glyph. They're, they're forcing because this Glyph is on cooldown. And we, I mean, we talked about what do they do when 33 on this Bristle is approaching your high ground at 25 minutes. I mean, it, it's happening at 20 minutes. I'm sure Jenkins is losing it. These, tier these Glyphs that people use sometimes, they're very, very dangerous. I've got the Blink now on Quinn. But they need more going damage. in for action, it just does not seem appealing. No, they need, I, they need the next item really on Duraccio, but the items are just flirting and too fast from Liquid. Roche, it's up if they want to go for it, but they're still looking to apply pressure around here, at least deny away this Wisdom Rune. And at the same time, just making sure that they keep the efficiency of Liquid. Absolutely. Nisha continues to clean up stacks in the jungle that are being made, and Mickey just finding completely free space on the other side of the map, far, far away from any chance of Gaming Gladiators getting out and finding him. And Liquid's Tricor is looking beautiful. And overall, for Gaming Gladiators, they kind of are in this for Protect 1 a bit for this DK because of how hard the Pucks game has gone. Yes, Pucks can scale, but right now, Quinn is in a very dangerous position versus this Tiny. Duracho tries to get out with this early play, but uh, Sentry's already laid down. They're already prepared for it. And of course, at this stage, still just the Shadow Blade alone. It's quite a bit more, and so he's got the fully-fledged Silver Edge. So for now, the farm just has to continue gaming Gladiators. Quinn? They want to... Liquid just wants to force it. The Glyph, it's still on cooldown for some time. I mean, it may be at a point... Maybe gaming Gladiators just have to let this set of racks go. It, it, it might feel like it, it yeah. It's a tough call to make, but in reality, what do you have right now you can't to stop, stop this push? Bristle. You cannot touch this bristle back. And Quinn's here. But outside of an illusory orb, that's about it, really, when it comes to the defense. Tofu just nearly getting Here's cleaned up by the nature's wrath. What? Hey, the Raxes are just gone. Uh, they, they just don't have the defense right now. They don't have the answer. They have to let Liquid take that full set. Dangerous times here for the side of Gaiman. It's pretty much yeah, all on Duracho at this point now. If the Silver Edge is even going to matter now. Because like you said, it's a tri-scaling core lineup here for Liquid. They can go back for Roche and look to probably continue this pressure here. And they just have so many saves as well. If Duracho is able to kind of get in and start off the action on a core, mm -hmm. it's incredibly likely Boxier and Insania, they're going to get the saves off. Sure, Gaming Gladiators, they've got some ways to get to the back lines between the blink of Ace and the blink of Quinn. And finding both of Liquid supports, it's not going to be easy. No, and it's the thing is too, is that these heroes are not squishy by any means too. I'm just still looking at damage, yeah. They'll have break, let's say, right, for the DK, on this DK for this Bristle. But Tiny has 3,000 HP. Bristle also has like 2,600. The Nature's Prophet is also incredibly tanky too. They may be able to focus fire on one target, but it feels very difficult for them to bring down all of these heroes. And Liquid is also... They've been gathering Lotuses, Owen. So on top of having this tankiness, they have a greater healing Lotus as well in the Shadow Demon to limit even more of that damage that Game of Gliders is lacking. They're going to keep this pressure going. Salary. To pop the Stampede. And Game of Gladiators, they don't want to lose even the supports at this point. Just try and stop the bleeding. Glyph is back up to Raccio in a dangerous position up here. It's going to be another objective. I mean, Gladiators, they're not going to want to do anything about. There's four minutes still left on this Aegis, too. Liquid can look to continue pressure. They do have to dress the lanes a little bit here, but Mickey, he can always just back up and join his team. 33's forcing it. 
the strategy right now. It's working beautifully from Liquid. Ace has bought it. I mean, this, they, they need this type of yeah. Q reduction, right? So, a Shiva's on a Centaur. They, I mean, they need to try to fight and push this back. They the, cannot lose another set. These are the two big item timings. Ace with the Shivas, and now Duracho with the Silver Edge. They're going to try and start off the action very quickly. Then we able to take the Aegis out of 33's hands. That's the one. Foxy and Mikael are going to attention over towards Ace. He's able to put the blame out. So for using the song, Gaming Gladiators, they're going to consider if they want to do something aggressive or if they want to hold back. They'll step off to the side of the fight for now. Nisha? No, he's going to get caught by the enemy. So we'll get dragged to the side of by the drinking buddy. Dream call down on the three of them. Duracho and Sebby trying to bring the damage. damage. They're doing a lot here. Bring it's the load down. Save Nisha out they're going to be able to take down Boxy. 33 is going to get pumped up by the heel of the Lotus Stabling from Ensania passing it over. 33 will be able to back away, but they Gaming Gladiators, just, they'll continue the chase. Orb comes in from Quinn. They're in onto Ensania. 33 and Mickey, they're looking to bail out of the fight. Dretcher, can he get a soft in time? He can't. The two cores will get out, but Gaming Gladiators, a successful defense. The big items come in just in time between the Shivas and the Silver Edge. It gives them that extra bit of power to push Liquid back. It was exact, I mean, exactly when they needed it. If they didn't get these items pretty much at that exact moment, these Raxes are going down. And it does seem to catch Liquid off guard there. Nisha, a very overzealous blink forward, gets himself caught in no man's we'll land. We'll see again here. Like, watch this jump from Nisha. This was very, very dangerous. Because it just puts his team in position where they can just get gone on afterwards and they have to kind of react to try to save him and it ends up setting up Quinn with I think a three-man dream coil. Yeah, immediately what Duraccio finding him with that Dragon Tail stun as he gets caught in the front. I mean, just that whole sort of start where Tofu uses the song to allow them to back off. You know, they were ready to hold back and not do anything, but at the same time, they were also ready if Liquid were to go that little bit too deep and make that sort of aggressive play. And that indeed was what ended up happening. They get punished, Liquid. Gaming Gladiators taking away some of that lead. It's big. That's what their lineup was about. It's not the standard Gaming Gladiators lineup that they usually go for. It's a much more scaling one. They do need to be able to protect themselves for these next... I mean, the, the pushes are going to continue coming, so they just have to be prepared and make sure that Duracho stays at this top net worth. Because, yeah, I guess that's the question. After that sort of defense, you know, if you're liquid and you get pushed back like that, you don't have the Aegis anymore. You're going to have to wait a long time until Roshan's back up. W what's the game plan? Can you afford to sit back, or do you have to keep your foot on the pedal and go again? I think you want to keep your foot on the pedal. It's probably just playing around like one of these BK extra BKB timings, though. When you see that type of pressure play come happen, you're like, okay, we're t our Tiny will go BKB probably, and then also the Bristleback, just, so, just to be able to force the issue or force the next Roche fight. And they do have at least the one on the bristle. I see Nisha, he still went a little bit greedy. He did go Echo Saber instead of the BKB just yet. But they do have a triple BKB timing, so I'd imagine, yeah, they still want to look to pressure. Gaming, they just want to keep looking to scale, but they can't fight if it comes to their high ground. Uh, Duracho feeling more confident now to farm in some skier positions on the map. I'm wondering if he does want to go down this Satanic Rap, or if he does feel like he wants even more damage. Both feel good. Smoke play from Liquid. They're ready to try and see if they can get a catch outside of the base that could lead them into the possibility of pushing for the high ground once more. So it's two BKBs. They have lanes in good position too. This bottom, la this bottom lane is always going to keep pushing in because of that early rack that they got. So looking to swing and catch somebody, but gaming. They're ready for this. Prepared inside the base, just using the illusions to split push. I guess the question is if, if they themselves want to go for a play in return. They do have smokes available on Celery. They've got a nice little semi-push going up top with this Dark Troll Summoner. They will use the Glyph on the side of Liquid to stop it. Looks like they do want to at least deny around this Wisdom Rune again. They want to fight on the side of Liquid, but Gaiman, they are smoked. They want to go as well. They're going to have to wait a little bit of time for the Elder Dragon form to come back up for Durachos. 30 seconds, 30 seconds so... Yep. Have a kind of comboing in with the, the ending of that smoke. And look at the neutral item that Duraccio chose too. I mean, he's just jacked up on the armor. He gets the craggy coat. Not usually the most ideal for the damage potential, but he's sitting at 45 armor or more. That's fair. It's a, a whole lot of physical coming out from Team Liquid. For sure. So they'll start to tentatively head out to the base gaming gladiators, but for now, Liquid very much elsewhere. The minutes close in towards the next set, the next Rosham respawn. And by the looks of it, I think, yeah, Liquid, maybe they do just wait for this to come in and return as yeah. they know after that last attempt to push high ground that didn't go too hot for them. Got to be very careful about how they go for it again. They're 
regaining that lead. We're starting to see, like, see that net worth grow once more. Back up to a 5k lead for Liquid with these more passive moments. Always inside the base, though. It's a little, it's more dangerous than those like outside fights when you're diving, committing forward. So around that Roche fight in two minutes or so, that's probably what Liquid is looking for, like you were saying. The BKB still will be stalled out from Nisha, but Nisha did find himself a nemesis curse. So Racho, let's get some of these the Silver Age touching onto 33. He can. The Dragon Tail's done to follow things up. Hey, Dragon who's up with the saves there? Snowball's in, and Boxy's ready to help turn things around. TP comes in from AK. They're gonna look straight over towards Tofu, trying to get the squish kills first, and with the BKB from AK, he can continue to punch into Tofu. Big a Tofu is surviving for this damage. Mickey's not got quite enough to kill Tofu off. The tofu, he's able to get away. Liquid with the turn up towards Ace instead, but the snap beats out. The Sprout there to try and stop him. He cuts his way out. But Boxy's got the punch up. Ace, he'll the get one more who stop off, but he'll fall. Now they'll Durantio. turn up towards Durancho. Liquid trying to surround him. Quinn looks to jump the back line for the toss up there. They have the burst to bring Durancho down. The Dream Call comes out, but it's a little too late. Gaming Gladiators, they're running out of damage. They have to run. They have to escape. And Liquid, they're going to try and do their best not to let them. Nisha back in with another toss combo onto Celery. Liquid take the team fight. Gaming thought they could re-go. They had the break potential. We saw Duracho, he turns and gets that second hit, but it's an instant disruption from Insania, and they just turn and get right on top of him. He is still semi-fragile on this DK if they have those numbers. And now a 10,000 gold lead. They can look to barrel down, down. They can look for another lane here. They certainly can. No need to necessarily wait now for the Sham respawn. 33 at level 20. Storming down the mid here, and Tofu's trying to cut sort of the waves with the illusions, but Liquid can quickly clean through those. Bloodstone's about to be finished for him too, so, I mean, you didn't kill him yet. You killed him the once on the Aegis with the Silver Edge, the Bloodstone's gonna make it a lot harder. Quinn, trying to stall things out, backdoor kicks in for a second here. Now they really don't want to have to use Duracho's buyback, 20 seconds until he's back, and they've got the fortification. So they should be able to, to push Liquid back without the presence of the DK. But another flurry of items gonna come out, and I believe they also lost their gem in that last engagement. Salary, he had it for what, five, six minutes or something. Now they have it on Insania. So overall, all these wards that gaming did place with that type of outside movement, they're all gone. So the vision is completely, yeah, completely gone from them. The map, the map is dark. And that Roche, it's gonna be potential soon. Let's see how quick the spawn is. Okay. Gaming have to be prepared. Okay, he's got his next time done, the full silver edge. So in a situation where we saw you know, that last oh, team boy. fight, a bit of a messy start in where they, they were trying to focus Tofu, but they didn't quite have the damage to bring him down. With that extra bit of damage the silver edge brings, should be a little easier to dispatch at the supports during the Song of the Siren if Mikke gets his KB off first. And now they can, to be honest with you, they, they might be able to do initiations onto a DK. If Duraccio shows himself aggressively, there could be a toss back, a break, and this DK will look very fragile. So big damage increase coming out from Mika. Gaiman have to be positioned down here. They have to be ready for the Rose spawn. Trying to get ward control. Uh, they absolutely want to contest this. Liquid. They're sneaking in. They've got the vision. And he's the, the opening. The Avalanche toss combo straight away. Bringing him down to about 10% HP almost on the puck. Quinn, he's got to get out. And he's dead. The box is in with a punch up. Quinn's out of the fight. Celery, he'll drop the TP out. They got anywhere to stop it. They don't. So Celery will live, but that's Quinn out for a full minute. It's no hesitation. The second they put the ward down, it's an instant jump. They got dropped away. It was like 10% HP just from the combo from Nisha. There's no way that Gaming can react in time. That Roche, 15 seconds, but they'll have more than, more than enough time to get it. And we're seeing multiple times as well, you know, Boxy with the blink. He's now so quick. more than ready to catch Quinn after he's tried to jaunt out with the Illusory Orb. It's so always there with a the follow-up box. Yeah, and even though Quinn, he does have like Defiant Shell and all this little bit of extra armor and stuff, he is still just very burstable from all this damage that Liquid has at this point. A yeah, massive amounts being done by that uh, the Nature's Wrath from Mikke. As the farm continues as he's ready to now swing over towards that Roche pit. I'll pick up another Aegis here. I just realized Mikke is, Mikke is just 0, 2, and 12. He's just the assist king this game with those Wrath of Nature's. Yeah, the highest kills they have right now, it's all on Boxy. It's all on it's Boxy. He's got seven kills right now, <laughs> seven, two, and six on his tusk. All right, him and Nisha have really just putting a hurt onto Quinn. This game in particular, it's every single time Quinn showed, they double jump him, and he's either dead or put in a position where he just can't really fight afterwards. The fact that Nisha got Nemesis Curse also does make it a lot harder for Quinn to survive that huge burst damage that comes out. 
They do have Duracho with this data list, but it's no defensive items really for him whatsoever. I like it though. So all in he on the damage. He has to go all in. I, it, all in on to. the damage here for Duracho. It's a, it is really a four protect one in the utmost. So he needs to just go all in on this. And I, this next fight, it's probably the most important one for them. Yeah, if he gets to free the attack, you cannot underestimate how much this dragon's going to hit hard. And they have the buff ups, right? I believe Tofu did finish a Flads as well. They had the Solar Crest from the last fight too. So just throw everything onto him and hope for the best. See so what they can get. This is going to be into 33's Aegis. And 33 with a f that Bloodstone that was finished up on top of the other items that he's got now. He is even tankier. And there is a double save as well, too. So they need to find the back line. They need to do some crazy type of simultaneous initiation. Let's see how prepared Liquid's for this. Because Liquid's going to know that their creeps are pushing all the way up to Gaming Gladiator's base. And Gaming Gladiator's, they're not doing anything about it. So Liquid, they'll know that they're out on the map. They got oh. scared. Oh, puts oh. him on the cliff. Indeed. Okay. He's going to get dragged <laughs> back down, though, Boxy. Having to make sure the 33 doesn't get stuck in any awkward spots there on the cliff. Nick is taking the base. Uh, he's got to put the stampede. They've got to try and get out of this because Quinn, he's been caught by the initial combo. Tofu does have the, the, the potential of the song if required to get Quinn Nick out of this. He's caught by this time. I mean, the struggle's going to catch on to him. The song comes out. And it's going to be enough to allow time for Quinn to get away from this. Yeah, he's out with the Blink Tofu coming in clutch with the save, but indeed at the same time in the base. What happened, Fog? I mean, it took the, he took the racks. I mean, he got caught because of the Invis DK sneaking around, but he, he got the objective. So I, well worth it for okay. him to be able to get that racks. Got you in the mid. He wants to try and finish this job off. Quinn is big, big trick. Kornisha has to put the BKB and run. He's too low to want to stick around for this one. Liquid got to look to reset for those 60 seconds. Gaming can't quite take advantage after getting this kill on the Nature's Prophet. Yeah, losing another set of racks when you're at this deficit is painful. Now yeah, the rat potential is strong as ever. Always. With this nature's profit, especially with the amount of farm that Mickey has. They'll certainly be looking for that sort of play again and, and respect. Gaming Gladiators, they've, they've got to be prepared for it. And There's only can't one be more. something that works their favor. If they can set up a successful trap for the nature's profit, it could be the beginning of Mikke's demise. I don't think Mikke is going to go for some type of play. I think now it's like he's going to join his team and look to go for the press because there's only one lane remaining. He doesn't need to take that type of crazy risk. That one was just, he's, he tried to seize an opportunity because he saw a couple people. It was just a nice move from Duraccio to catch him off guard there. But Liquid, I imagine when he respawns, they're just going to look to group. And we'll see how Gaming can fight back for his Duraccio's damage is definitely there if he's able to get these attacks off. New neutral item soon, too, would be quite nice for him. I know the Craggy gives him some defensive capability, but we all want just full out aggression for Duraccio. Yeah, gonna go straight for that Ags yeah. after the Silver Edge, and now over towards the Tormentor. They'll be able to take this one. The smoke comes out from Liquid. They want to make the most out of these final couple of minutes of 33's Aegis. Two minutes remaining on it. Quinn has to be careful of his positioning. Ooh. So much burst damage if they see him. See how quick his reactions are if they do get the chance to jump him. And Quinn, he's not going to play any, uh, to take any chances. He's back to base. Okay, joining the squad. They're smoked up. Creeps are being cut at the moment in the mid lane, but the top lane pushing in. Nisha and oh, Boxy both ready for potential initiation. It's just going to be the illusion for now, baiting some of the action. Smoke didn't break. Could look to go again around the mid, but Gaming Gladiator is likely to sit a safe space away from Liquid here. There's Everybody wants to get caught by the jump of Nisha. 33's gone for Greaves of his own. I mean, that's very interesting. This extra little aura. Mickey Buddies. Mickey Buddies. Oh, Quinn's going to try and jump over the waning rift onto the three. And the Mace Trunks come over the follow up. The Avalanche trips him up. The Dream Core's down, but the BKB is popped by Mickey. Now back off for now here, Liquid. 33, standing his ground. They continue just to be this sort of impenetrable brick wall between Liquid and Gaming Gladiators. And they did get the tower. Did get whittled down from these constant hits from the tree and from those tosses. Does eventually die. DK form was used as well, too, so there will perhaps be a little bit of a window if Liquid wants to siege once that DK form goes down. I will see how strong they feel with the last seconds or so of this Aegis. Duraccio. He's going to try and start try. the action in Turai and see if they can take down 33 quickly. 33 dragged down to the it's side. Insane. Disruption comes out. They're going to be able to keep 33's first life alive a little bit longer as 33's able to back away. In fact, now he's ready to aggressively move it. He pops the Bloodstone. He heals incredibly up. A cellar has been burst down. Has to buy back here on the Enchantress. And Boxy's still alive. And they've still got 20 seconds on 33's ages. They get another stop connection on towards 33. Can they even finish him off the once? The snowball comes in for Boxy. Quinn. But it was one of the song comes in for Tofu. Tries to get Gaming Gladiators back to a safe spot. Quinn's able to jump away here. Tofu bailing the team out. Yeah, it's <laughs> about to get taken away from him. So 33. <laughs> We'll get tossed back to safety, Liquid, they'll pull back with the Aegis expiring. How is Boxy living all these moves? He kept himself at, what, 10% HP and felt like for 30 seconds. 
that was a lot used there from Gaiman. 10 gotcha. seconds till DK form. Here in the opening. They don't quite have the damage though. And again, the disruption saved there from Insania. Ace is caught on the front. They're bursting through the center incredibly quickly. Ace is gone and he doesn't have payback. The saves every single time. One final racks remaining. Ace down for 60. Gaiman. Can they continue holding on? Liquid, they'll back up and reset off of that. They will. I think a little bit of a sigh of relief there for Gaming Gladiators in a situation where they don't have their sense or ace for 50 seconds. Liquid are going to actually pull back away from them and not try and continue the push quite now. So many of these fights, Gaming's just getting caught from what? I think it was a three-man Ava toss there and then a Wrath of Nature comes through and multiple heroes are just at sub-50% HP. It's scary for them to commit afterwards. And these two supports on Liquid, they have to be addressed. Somehow they have to start getting like extra silences or something because the saves, they're perfect. The disruptions are coming out almost instantly. The drinking buddy snowballs, etc. It's there just too fast. Gaming have to try to stop this. I mean, on paper, you've got to imagine it's yeah, Quinn on the puck that's got to find the position to disrupt the, the disruptions effectively, put Pretty a stop much. to these sort of plays coming in from the back lines. Duracho has found another damage item, so Mind Breaker from that neutral item, of course, and he has the Agonims finished up, so a bit stronger and almost 25. Quinn as well has kicked up the pressure. Parizma is finished with a Mind Breaker of his own, so maybe like even these little silences or something that he could do with these extra attacks could be a little bit of an X-Factor difference maker. Still very difficult for Gaiman. They can't get through these tanky cores with these double saves. And Liquid, really with how long they were able to get the uh, get the action going throughout the end of that Aegis, it's, it's getting close to the time where we will see Roshan pop up yeah. once more. And Liquid, with this sort of a lead, maybe not too much reason to take too many risks, so... I think they'll wait for that, Rosh. I think so too. Duracho, trying to do some sneaky plays here, but he's got caught. eyes on him. He's, he's gonna going. get the jump. 36 coming friends. with the damage. Backup is there for Duracho. Duracho's able to bail up to the high ground. Gaming Gladiators do split Liquid relatively apart. They fully commit over towards Insania, but he's able to get the self-disruption off. Nisha, eyes over towards Tofu. They've been able to burst through the two supports. This is the sort of fight the Gaming Gladiators need in terms of the start of it. Can they get the cause? They'll look Nisha. towards Nisha. Nisha with the BKB TP out. They've got he nothing knows. to stop it. He'll get away, but the song's up to put a stop to the escape of Mikke. As Gaming Gladiators surround the nature's profit. There's no save left for Mikke as Gladiators hit back hard. Duracho with the sneaky play, just playing around. He looks like he's, I mean, it's like a typical Duracho. Hey guys, we got him. That was uh -oh. a good bait. He's got the whole team with him. And now they could try for a bit of a push themselves. I mean, with this, it is 80 seconds, no Mickey. That is very true. He does not have that buyback. Not yet, 500 gold away. He probably doesn't want to use it anyway. They've got the glyph. We'll be able to stall things out a bit here. It is a, okay, still one minute and 45 seconds for the Roshan. So when he's back in, Liquid will have the full lineup back in force. That could have been a pretty crucial moment. If it, it was one of those instant spawns, gaming could have potentially well, Check this there. out again. I mean, you're absolutely right, Duraccio. He just kind of going for the bait play here, and Liquid, they, they kind of take the bait. And they took the fight, too. I was watching Mickey attempting for some split push, potentially. It seemed like sending his trade, but he made the call to join. So they thought that they could probably take this fight, but overall, positioning from gaming was a bit too superior with that song that isolates Mickey afterwards. And the damage from Duraccio is it's getting pretty scary. And yeah, Mickey. And that BKB just not lasting quite long enough to allow him the safety to escape. Comes to an end, and Tofu's got the answer. One minute till the rush, they're gonna check it out. They wish it was up immediately. 20 seconds make it. Liquid still gotta make the smoke out. They don't have the same information, so they've gotta at least get something. They've gotta poke their face there to see. AC was finished for Nisha. I may have the net worth lead, but... Gaming Gladiators certainly have the position advantage here. Duraccio. He's going to find 33 to start things off. He's going to try and open the play. There'll be an avalanche that trips up Quinn straight away. Quinn, he's got to be careful. Bursting about a third of the HP. Backup comes in from AC straight over towards Insania. The coil's there. Quinn, he's been able to isolate the two supports on the back Quinn, line. Duraccio, he's bringing the damage. They're taking down Insania. Boxy getting low. He'll get another snowball off though, Boxy. And finished off Tofu. Buyback comes in from Quinn. Snowball over towards Celery, but Boxy has to blink out. Still alive somehow on this task. 33 pops the BKB. He tries to Duraccio. perform, but Mickey's actually brought 33 off it inadvertently there with the Sprout. Going for Duraccio, but Duraccio is able to get over this sort of area of the map that Liquid, they can't traverse quite as easily. He's, in He's trouble. breaking away from them, but they've got the chase down. They've got another set of catch with the Sprout, and Mickey bringing in the damage. Liquid, they push for Quinn. the fight. They get the combo onto Quinn. He's run out of orbs to jump to. He's got it back up in a second. But the crit comes in there hard from Nisha. Quinn, it's a die back on him. Liquid, they push for the fight, they take it, and they're straight into the Roche pit. Nobody else is doing damage but Duraccio. At some point, he just can't do it on his own. These three tanky cores, they sustain through all of it. 
with that buyback coming in. Quinn actually buys back, TPs to the top outpost, and goes through the twin gate to try to get involved because he got picked off very early on there. This avalanche from Nisha was absolutely absurd. It kind of read the play and broke that initial go that Gaming wanted to get to try to pop Duraccio. And there you see Quinn, he does get punched up and brought down, so they have that number advantage for him. Good amount of time so many in this fight. Times in this game, we see him Boxy just living on a slither of health. Unbelievable. And, and getting to play out another multiple sets of his abilities. And this gives them the chance for Liquid to re engage. And at this part of the fight, you know, Quinn, as you say, buying back. It's just not enough to shift the tides of the team fight. No, it takes him too long to get there, because it's not like it's his outpost bottom. He has a TP top, go through a twin gate. It took him an extra 15 seconds or so to re-get inside that fight. And now Mega's been claimed. Liquid, they have 45 seconds. Yeah, they're no pushing button. on. The fortification comes out. 40 seconds in which Gaming Gladiators is going to have to try and defend without Quinn. Ace looking for the lead in, but he gets caught immediately by the Avalanche. Bounces away, Ogre Seal turn. The Stampede's there to get back, but the tier fours are falling. Liquid, they're onto the, the edge. Gaming Gladiators have got anything to stop this. They do not. GG's going to be called. Liquid, take game two. They are playing so aggressive from the early game to the mid game. They're just very confident the way they're playing and have to give tons of commands. I mean, the boxy toss is just unbelievable. How many times is he living on slivers of HP? But at the end there, these avalanches from Nisha, he's reading the moments that they want to capitalize on getting these type of chain stuns to bring down this Brisbane, but he has that coverage kind of perfectly, especially in that last crucial fight. And doing it in sort of two incredible fashions so far as well, this best of fight. The first game coming in with quite a turnaround. This game, getting that lead and holding it and making sure that they don't make mistakes, don't let it slip away from them. A couple of times, Gaming Gladiators, they did come back with a pretty decent pushback, but it was never enough to slow Liquid down. And as you say, they're kind of drawing to some of these heroes that are getting through, like the support picks. I can't imagine we're going to see the Shadow Demon Tusk duo get through There's again. no way you can give them both, and probably at least not that Tusk, because Boxy, out of control. Well, there we go. So far, ladies and gentlemen, crazy stuff from Team Liquid here in this best of five. They are two games up, one game away from claiming the championship title against Gaming Gladiators. Can Gaming Gladiators turn this one around? It's going to be tough. 2 0 at the moment for Team Liquid. Oh, how the tables have turned. It was just about a month ago in this grand finals duo. These two teams were up against each other in a best of five, and it was Gaming Gladiators. That was up two games in a grand finals, and they made it look easy. I will say this is a very competitive final so far because Gaming Gladiators is putting up one heck of a fight. But Team Liquid doing it here again in game two. Now on match point in this best of five. Before we get to game three, there's so much to talk about, and I think there is a uh, there's one thing I just like to highlight. I think sometimes when we see patch notes, Lacoste, and we see a hero having plus one armor, and everybody's like, yeah, sure, whatever. I think Boxy just proved how important just one different in staff can make. How did he live so frequently? It's a sliver of HP. Yeah, Boxy definitely a professional e-gamer that reads patch notes. This guy is playing out of his freaking mind. I did praise him before this game. I've been praising him throughout the whole year. Definitely deserves a praise. And with drinking buddies, or should we call it skull buddies, because <laughs> they, he's pulling them out of so many troubles. I got to point out the support duo, uh, Insania and Boxy, playing the same heroes twice in a row, having Shadow Demon, having Tusk as well. You have this break mechanic, but it's going to be nullified by both Disruption and the Snowball, so you're not going to get the full value. One of the reasons why 33 was playing so aggressive into them. Yeah, and those two supports, they went for Blink Dagger so early on. You had these double blinks in a game where Gaiman were already on the back foot, making it so that any move that they tried to make, the Liquid supports were there to counteract them. And in games where you're losing so hard, you just need any kill. Any kill that you can get to get you back, but no, Boxy and Insania, amazing job. I also want to talk about 33 on the Spursalback. He hit his item timing so early, from a free lane to being uncontested in the triangle, to showing up bottom at minute 14 with an agonims, a voodoo mask, and completely popping off. Liquid, they just have such a formidable triple threat, right? You've got the Tusk, the SD, and the Tiny. At any minute, if you don't execute on your jump, like you said, the saves are going to come into play, Nisha is going to hit a clutch avalanche. BKBs weren't really a thing for gaming too much in this game. So the avalanche, the toss, it was such high value for Liquid to utilize. And you've got to go to gaming. They're drafting themselves into a position of such high pressure moments. 
you're in the grand finals of TI, you want to get your first Aegis, and they're making them so, like they're making the fight so difficult. And that's where Liquid is such a strong team. They exploit their opponent's inability to hit the perfect combination. So gaming to get a kill is a stomp into a silver break, and then you you murder. But Liquid, they have the support, the, the tiny, to completely break that apart. So even when there's a comeback on the cards for gaming, they have to hit the perfect spells in high pressure situations. And if they don't, then they just lose the game. Like Liquid, there is no way you give them SD and Tusk in the next game. Like it feels like it's illegal. Like in, in this fight as well, it's like the, the DK goes in, they don't get the break for long enough onto the Bristol because they have no follow up damage, and then it's fully disjointed. Liquid keep kiting back, allowing for the fight to extend further. Puck goes down, has to buy back, but where's the damage? The DK, no BKB, no Satanic available. Like it's just, he doesn't even have Satanic. He went for the Aghanim. Yeah, gaming, it, it's such a struggle for them. Liquid are just out of this world at the moment. They have to split up, let's split this up, this duo, because it's doing way too much. They try to counter it with Ricky in game one. They had something prepared where you are going to pick up that shard. That cloud for Ricky is going to be something very good against both of these spells, especially once you pick up the shard, of course. But second game, they try to counter it with the silence. Puck, they jumped the back lines. It was not enough. Ace, Ace also picked up the Blink Dagger relatively early on. Blade Mail into Blink Dagger. This is like top three Blink Dagger purchases when it comes down to timing. And also Void Spirit. I think this is the key hero that has been banned in both of these games. They do not want to give Quinn a matchup where he's going to be able to jump the back line and kill the two supports. And also, Boxy on the Tusky goes for a Halberd. We've only seen four other games of Halberd being picked up. The, hit, the item is non-existent in the meta, due to the fact that when you BKB, the disarm just gets removed. But Boxy, he identifies...